Hi, how do you get a Hubble palette with narrow band filters using free software? I'll show you two ways. Welcome to Deep Sky Detail. I'll be processing IC405, the Flaming Star Nebula. I have around three hours each of HA, O3, and S2 using my 80ED Orion refractor on my Orion Sirius mount. So all in all, it's about nine hours of integration time. I'll be uploading the data to my Discord server, so if you'd like to process the image yourself, feel free. I bet you'll do better than I do. All right, so the first thing I have here is my HA data opened in Cyril. I'm going to quickly do a background extraction Note that I'm not cropping the image. The image has been registered with S2 and O3 already, so when I bring this into GIMP, the images will already be aligned. It may make the background extraction less accurate, but it should be okay. Then I'm going to stretch the image and remove the stars using StarNet++. Stretching is pretty easy, but I go into more detail about how I do it in a previous video. It involves using the generalized hyperbolic stretch transformation. You first set a symmetry point, the first symmetry point is on the left side of the histogram when you zoom in. For the first stretch, I increase the local stretch intensity slider quite a bit, and then slowly increase the stretch factor until I see the nebula, then click apply. Periodically move the black point down by changing type of stretch to linear. On the next GHS stretch, I like to change things to a logarithmic scale and find the part of the curve that is in a transition point between steep and shallow. I'll click on that to make it the symmetry point and then only increase the stretch factor. I keep repeating these steps, making only incremental changes. I think this looks pretty good. We don't need to stretch things a ton at this point, just enough for StarNet++ to work. Now I'll remove the stars with StarNet++ with image processing, star processing, and star net star removal. That looks good. Now let me do the same thing with my O3 and S2 data. Okay, now that we've removed the stars, we can bring everything into GIMP. I've got my HA, S2, and O3 starless images here. I've also added my HA stars, which I'll add at the end. First, let me remove some of the stars that StarNet didn't fully remove. I'll be using the Resynthesizer plugin. If you don't have it, you can use the Heal tool to remove them individually. I'll make a large selection around the stars or stars that I want to remove, then go to Filters, Enhance, and Heal Selection. I'll repeat this for each filter. I also use the heal tool to get what heal selection could. Let me see if I can get the narrow band to have the same brightness level across the different images. I'll click on the histogram tool and check the mean brightness. All right, they're the same average brightness. We could try combining them now but it won't work too well in terms of the colors. Let me show you. If we go to Colors, Components, Compose, and put the S2 in the R channel, HA in the G channel, and O3 in the B channel, this is what we get. It looks okay, but it's kind of too green everywhere. What we need to do is balance the colors a bit more. The Hubble palette is not scientific. It's supposed to show the S, H, and O emission lines as equally as possible. So this isn't the best representation of it. There's too much H alpha in it. Let's go back to the individual filters. We'll go ahead and crop the image. The HA stars are in this project, so they get cropped correctly too. What we want to do is stretch the O3 and S2 channels quite a bit and add a lot of contrast using curves. 
it's okay to make them super noisy. Let's do it. Now it's important not to clip the values too much. For the O3 layer, I'm pretty sure there's only strongish signal in the middle of the nebula. So I'm working on bringing that out as much as I can. I'm going to go ahead and use Gimmick here. Uh, gimmick is just an, is another sort of set of plugins that needs to be installed. I'll have a link of it in the description. Let me find Remove Hot Pixels, and I'll set the threshold very low and the mask size quite high to blur the image and get rid of some of the noise. I'll also add some Gaussian blur to the image after I do this. It'll be in super important to keep the noise down in the luminance layer later on. Oh, it looks like we missed a star. Let me remove that too. O3 is definitely the weakest channel, but with this, we should get some nice blue in the image. I'll go ahead and do the same thing with S2. I'll also increase the contrast of HA, but won't stretch it too much because there's already a lot of signal there. Because S2 has a lot more signal than O3, I'll set the threshold a bit higher in Gimmick in the Remove Hot Pixels tool, but I'll add a slight medium blur to get rid of some of the noise. Now we'll go ahead and compose this into an RGB image with S as the R channel, HA as the G channel, and O3 as the B channel. But this won't be our final image. We'll need to add a luminance layer. But first, the RGB. Comparing it to the original, there is a lot more yellow and blue, which is good, but there is still some green. Green is okay, but I like to remove it in the Hubble palette. We can fix this in a second, but first let's make a luminance channel that's mostly HA data. With HA as the base, so we'll put it on the bottom, We'll put S2 on top and set that layer mode to screen. Then we'll change the opacity of the S2 layer to about 15 to 20%. I'll go ahead and repeat this with O3. Now with O3, there is a little wisp of nebulosity. I kind of want that to stand out in the luminance image and I don't want to lose it. So I'm going to go ahead and screen it in again. But this time I use a layer mask to only add the little bit of wispy nebulosity. I'll also lower the brightness to help it blend in a bit. You can see what it looks like when I blink the layers on and off. Let me right click on the layers now and create a new layer from the visible layers. So this luminous layer has information from all three filters, which is what we want. If we had just used HA, we'd have lost information. So let's copy this and put it into the RGB image we created earlier. Just copy and paste, then right click to send the pasted image to a new layer. Move this layer down and set the RGB image to color. Now, here's a neat little trick. Take your luminous layer and duplicate it. Then add a slight Gaussian blur and set that layer mode to screen. You'll brighten up the nebula and get rid of the noise. Nice. It will also start to make the oranges less orange and more gold. You can play with the curves and opacity of this level to increase contrast where you want it. There's still a lot of green and not enough gold, I think. So let's go to Colors, Components, and Channel Mixer. I'll let you in on a couple secrets. To remove the green, decrease the slider for the green and green channel. That's pretty easy. But to make things more yellow or gold, you want to play with the red and red channel and green and green channel sliders the most. Try setting those two sliders equal to each other, and then when you've got it almost where you want it, increase the red and green channel a bit to make it nice and golden. You can also reduce the blue in the red channel to get a nicer shade of blue if you'd like for the wispy part. I know it's kind of unintuitive, but it worked here for me. Now it looks pretty good to me, but if you want it to be on the more orange side of gold, then increase the red in the red channel and green in red channel sliders. At this point, it's kind of a matter of personal preference in terms of what colors you want. We had a lot of S2 and HD data and they overlapped. So it makes sense for most of the nebula to be a yellowish orange color. This is because S2 and HA were mapped onto the red and green color channels. Red and green is of course yellow and O3 was mapped to blue, and we see most of the blue in the wispy part of the center. So the colors here check out on an intuitive level in my opinion, 
but feel free to play around with things. It's okay. The last step, let's add the stars. So go back to the filters project, grab the stars and paste them in. Set the layer mode to addition or screen and you've got a nice image. I think it looks pretty okay. All right, so for method number two, this is pretty simple. Remember the RGB image we made before we stretched the heck out of the O3 and S2 channels? But we can just use that as the luminance layer. It will give us a sharper luminance layer because we didn't need to blur the O3 and S2 layers as much. I'll copy and paste it into our project. Now let me align it a bit. We can add a second luminance channel and set it to screen to brighten up the fainter parts of the nebula. I also need to crop the layers to the image size. Because we're using an RGB layer where the O3 and S2 channels were stretched quite a bit, those colors will still come through even when we use this different luminance channel. So let's compare the two images. They both look nice, I think. I think I'll go with a sharper version. The next step is to put it through AstroSharp. I'm using the dual PSF model. First, I'll find the right sharpening for the stars. I don't think the stars need that much work, so I'll set it pretty low. 1.25 for that PSF slider works well. It's not blending in too well, so I'll decrease the first blend parameter a tad from nine to three. That's better, the ringing is pretty much gone. The nebula doesn't need a lot of sharpening, I'll try two and a half. Let's let it run and I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back in GIMP and have the AstroSharp image loaded. It made things quite a bit sharper, I think. Let's compare it with the original version. We'll zoom in on the stars. The stars are a bit tighter, which is nice, but there's still some noise. Let's take it back into AstroSharp and use Astro Clean. I'll first uncheck the full image and go back to preview. Now I'll load the image and choose Astro Clean as the model. I'll click update sliders and yeah, Astro Clean is really aggressive. So let's change the aggressiveness slider to something like 0.6. Keep in mind for Astro Clean, the the aggressiveness slider is the only thing that really matters. The PSF sliders don't mean anything. Okay, things look good. Let's use multi-core this time and process the image. Zooming in in GIMP, it looks like a lot of the noise is gone. Nice. And the stars aren't blurred either. If you like this content, you should check out another processing video I made of the Eagle Nebula. And if you want to know more about AstroSharp, my free AI Astro imaging software, you should check out this playlist. Well, I think I have a finished image. What do you think? Thanks for watching.